There are many reasons why gamification can suck. And we're not just saying that because it's a catchy title. Though reason number four will shock you. Gamification traditionally makes the promise of playing a game, but often delivers game mechanics about as exciting as a multiple choice exam. But as students and gamers, shouldn't we want more? Thanks so much to Great Courses Plus for sponsoring this episode. Want to learn how to see their amazing lectures for free? Stay tuned until after the episode. While the word gamification has only been with us for about a decade, you can find the concept of it going back centuries. A game designer in ancient Egypt created a game called Senate to teach players about and to help prepare for the afterlife. And while the designer is now experiencing said afterlife for themselves, the game survives to this day. So we know that using some game design principles to teach is a great idea. And gamification has borrowed several well-known concepts from video games and successfully applied them to everything from traditional schools to corporate training to physical exercise. You're going down, Dragox! Just hold on, I have like nine smoothies to drink. Thanks to games, traditional gold stars given to students for achievement have morphed into badges, points on assignments can now be XP, and leaderboards track competition. Of course, these were all of the low-hanging fruit gamification gurus picked up first. Why? Well, because they're all extrinsic rewards, external accolades given to the player. They measure things like experience points, fat loot, and yes, grades. And teachers love extrinsic rewards because they're an easy part of a very tough job made easier by them being trackable with a computer. But there is another type of reward that often goes overlooked in gamification, intrinsic rewards. Intrinsic rewards are internal. They're things like fun, satisfaction with a job well done, or pride in an accomplishment. They provoke a personal satisfaction as the player or student recognizes that they've done something cool. For instance, take a raid boss in an MMO. After a successful raid, not everybody gets the aforementioned fat loot, but the feeling of satisfaction, of personal achievement when the big bad goes down, is shared by everyone in the party. Humans love this, and it can often be measured with things like fist bumps. And computers have trouble measuring fist bumps. For now. Good game design is all about balance, and since extrinsic and intrinsic rewards both have strengths and weaknesses, it's important when thinking of gamifying something to use both. So, let's look at a killer example, shall we? Professor Plum, fresh from braining somebody in the library with a wrench, has to teach the next day. Though lately, it seems like his class isn't responding to his tired old lectures, regurgitated like clockwork every semester. And since murder isn't an option because tenure boards kind of frown on that, he turns to gamification. At first, he simply tries to replace a few words here and there into terms gamers can relate to. After all, it's easy to change the naming conventions of a letter grade to an amount of experience points. He thinks, Eureka! And we think, what the what? Because relying only on extrinsic rewards will only get him so far. Yes, at first, we may like the difference, but we can't be placated forever. That initial surge of enthusiasm, and possibly in our grades, will start to fade. And at that point is when many teachers invoke this episode's namesake and simply say, gamification sucks. But it's important to note that extrinsic rewards are not all necessarily bad. They just have to be a little more creative. So, let's try out something like attendance. What if rather than getting penalized for missing a class, each class you did attend gave you experience points that affected your overall grade? If I knew I only needed 5 more XP to go up a level, or, you know, get me in B territory instead of a C, that's an extrinsic reward that I would definitely show up for. And this could go even further when balanced with intrinsic rewards. Wouldn't it be cool if a class's assignment structure was more akin to that of a quest? These could be big or small, and tie together multiple concepts of the world. In fact, a lesson could even turn into a full quest line connecting multiple disciplines. For instance, maybe a caravan is crossing a desert, and the students need to use their knowledge of the desert's geography to plot their best course. Then, the caravan reaches an oasis, and that's where mathematics is introduced in order to most effectively refill their water. And then, the caravan moves on to an outpost, where some of the camels will deliver their cargo, and weights and measures are taught here. The quest line not only teaches individual concepts, but also provides an engaging and enjoyable context about how all of those concepts are related to one another. Or what about group work? Lots of teachers currently group students together into teams for assignments already. But what if they treated those groups like an adventuring party? Teachers could ask students about their talents and interests, and then group them into parties where each student brings something unique to the table for group projects to benefit from, kind of like class roles in RPGs. And then through helping their party progress through a series of classroom or project tasks, the thanks other party members will give to individuals in said party will provide even more intrinsic rewards. And finally, one more idea that might seem kinda off the wall. Nobody likes exams, 
But what if said exam had a few questions on it where if any party member answered the question correctly, all of the members of that party get credit for it? Now, will only one student bother to answer? Probably not, because the intrinsic reward of working together and thanks a student could get for helping out is pretty strong. So almost all of the party members will want to study to help out. So by using extrinsic measurements along with intrinsic rewards, it turns out the clickbaity title of this episode is false, and gamification doesn't have to suck after all. All it really needs is some good game design behind it. Okay, I finished my episode! Heck yeah! You know, I only need 237 more of these bad boys before I can unlock the ability to start a film series on this channel. Yeah, so be on the lookout for that in 2024. <laughs> Once again, thanks so much to our sponsor for this episode, Great Courses Plus, an on-demand video resource for learning, featuring lectures and courses from the world's top professors and experts from National Geographic, the Smithsonian, and more. And with topics spanning science, cooking, history, photography, literature, or even how to play chess, you're sure to find something you're psyched about. So far, my favorite series has been The Great Tours African Safari, because I'm both a sucker for big cats and I've been really missing the outdoors. Plus, there's no time like the present to do research for a future trip. And right now, you can try Great Courses Plus for free and check out their library of over 11,000 video lectures on your desktop, tablet, or phone, wherever you learn best. Just head to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash extra credits and check it out for yourself. Legendary thanks to our patrons O'Reels1, Kyle Murgatroyd, Gunnar Clovis, Dominic Valenciana, Casey Muscha, El Mamo Inchikawi, Alicia Bramble, and Ahmed Ziad Turk. <laughs> <laughs>